And we're live. Hi, everyone. Uh, so welcome to uh, Homoly Dance, the channel on history and board games. Thanks for joining today's live stream, uh, where my guest and I will be playing the recently released GMT game, uh, Caesar Rome versus Goal. Uh, as this is a live stream, just want to remind you that you can interact with us uh, using the live chat. Um, and because it's a live play, there is two things that I want to make clear right now. Uh, one thing is that we will probably make some rules mistakes. Uh, and the other thing is that we won't do optimal moves. That's only my third game. It will be my guest uh, first game. So it's really uh, uh, here just to, uh, uh, we're just playing to discover the game, have a bit of fun, have a bit of a chat. Uh, and before we start with uh, rules teach uh, for my guest today, uh, and we start playing, I'm gonna introduce. Uh, and my guest is here and he's Sean. Hi, Sean. G'day. How's it going? So just for context, uh, as you can hear, Sean is an Aussie, uh, one of the admins of the Coin Discord server. Uh, he's also a playtester and a proofreader on all of my designs. So that uh, uh, I owe him a lot. Uh, but first and foremost, Sean is a friend. Uh, so uh, we're going to tease each other during the game, probably be a bit mean, but it comes from a place of love. So don't worry. There is no... Uh, no, no bad feelings between us. Um, so, but yeah, thanks, Sean, for joining. Really appreciate uh, you attempting that small uh, live stream experiment with me. Um, but I think it's gonna be, uh, I think it's gonna be really fun. Uh, I'll be checking the comments uh, while we are here, but I think it's all going great. Uh, we have some people on the stream, so that's nice. Uh, so, good evening, everyone. And. Uh, so the game that we're playing tonight, as I was saying, is Caesar Rome uh, versus Goal. And the setup is like this. And I'm going to have our two faces on the side and the game here on, uh, yeah, on full screen mode. Uh, so just maybe for context, uh, it's uh, 57 BC. Uh, the uh, Rome uh, Senate has sent Caesar to uh, submit the Gallic uh, Transalpine uh, tribes uh, and uh, and extend the Roman Empire. Uh, and I will be tonight playing Caesar and Sean, you will be playing the Gallic tribes. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, we're going to fight over the course of six turns, so from uh, 57 BC to 52 uh, BC. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll try to submit as much Gallic tribes that I can, and you will try to prevent me from uh, doing just that, so pretty straightforward two-player CDG game. Um, and maybe we'll start by um, giving you some, like a rules teach. I know that you've been looking at the rules, but I just want to make sure that uh, all the concepts are clear. And of course, maybe also for the people who are watching live, so I'm going to explain all the core concepts of the game, but I will also add some information um, uh, along the way, just explaining some 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 special rules because I think that overwhelming uh, the you and also Sean with all the special rules straight away uh, is not going to be super useful. So it's a teaching game. So I might withhold some information until uh, I feel that it's relevant, and I might use that to my advantage, obviously. Yes, uh, <laughs> I would hope so. yes good. Uh, but I think the best way to um, to look at it is probably go uh, first um, discuss about um, what's winning in this game. Uh, so um, the thing that is interesting in this game is that um, the winning conditions, the victory conditions are really on my side. So I'm playing a Caesar and I'm trying to have a very specific objective. You win by preventing me to fulfill that objective. Uh, so that's the way main way for you to, to win is to prevent me to win. Uh, and the way I win is by accumulating 12 victory points through the course of a game. And I have uh, different ways of uh, gaining 12 victory points. Uh, there are actually 20 victory points available on the board. Uh, and I just have six turns to get 12 of those. So I'm going to go through the different ways I can gain victory points. The first way I can gain victory points, and I will when I will be pointing at stuff, or oh, actually people see my, uh, my screen, so that should be fine. But I'm going to move Caesar around to point on stuff. Uh, which might be weird, but I'm going to use Caesar's head uh, to point at things. Uh, so the main way, so the different ways for me to win victory points. The first one is by uh, eliminating tribes. So as you can see here, uh, there is a tribes eliminated board. And each time I will eliminate a tribe, it will go here. And for each four tribes, I will get one VP. So overall, I can, 
accumulate up to 12 uh, eliminated tribes here, which means that I can get three VPs uh, from uh, that way. Uh, the other way for me to win some victory points is to succeed in uh, side campaigns. So the first one is Caesar's Pass. That is a connection in the Alps that goes from Provincia to Germany. So if I succeed in taking that stronghold, I will get that victory point here. So that's a fourth victory point. And then I have two victory points up here that I can get by removing those two uh, influence markers. Uh, and I will get two victory points from a Germania campaign. And I have the same mechanic here in Britannia. Uh, there are two uh, influence markers. If I remove both of them, I will get two victory points. So that's um, overall uh, three uh, for the tribes, one for Caesar's Pass, so that's four, two for uh, Germania, so that's uh, six, and then two for Britannia, that's eight. And the 12 remaining victory points or points that I get for governance at the end of each turn. <clears throat> so what we do at the end of each turn, as you can see, there is a VP marker at the end of each of those turns. And at the end of each turn, we'll check how uh, good I am at governing um, uh, the different uh, Gallic regions. And you can see there is government points here uh, on the side. Uh, so if I get uh, less than three points, it's an instant loss for me. So less than three government points, and I will explain how I get those. If I get four to six, I would get zero VP, but I get to play another turn. Seven to eight, I get one VP. Nine to 10, I get two VPs. Uh, so those are double-sided. Uh, so the VPs are one, two. And if I don't get them, I just don't get them. And governance, so those uh, governance points, I get them by controlling different areas. So as you can see uh, on each of the areas, you have a number in a blue box. Uh, and that tells me how much point I get for being present or how much point I get for dominating. So in Aquitania here, uh, where I come from actually, so that's nice, in the southwest of France, uh, if I'm present, I get one point. If I dominate, I get one point. You see it's in the blue box here. Uh, for Celtica, which is the major uh, region, if I'm present, I get two points. If I dominate, I get five points. And then for uh, Belgica, uh, so Belgium, uh, extended Belgium. <laughs> uh, if I dominate, I get four points. If I'm present, I get two points. Uh, so to be present, I just need to have one influence marker uh, in the overall uh, region. And to be dominant, I need to have uh, to dominate more provinces than you. Uh, and how do you dominate a province? You see you have those areas that have borders all around them. And inside you have a number and um, a couple of numbers. Uh, so the big number is just an identifier, and the small number is the number of spaces I need to control to control the area. So here, for example, if I had control here, here, and here, I will dominate that province. Yeah. Yeah. And if I dominate more province than you do, then I will have dominance over Belgica and get the four points. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the main way for me uh, to uh, gain some points. So through governance, by killing tribes, uh, by doing minor campaigns, uh, and that's pretty much it. And what you're trying to avoid is that I get that I get enough points to um, uh, to win the game. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And I think that's pretty much it for the overall objective. Any questions on the objective of the game? Um, one question on the presence. Is it? Yeah. Just so you would just need one influence marker or something in that whole region, say yeah. all of Celtica, not yeah, exactly. one influence in each province. Yeah, exactly. So if I want to have presence in Belgica, I just need to have one like this, and I would be considered present. Yeah, cool. So that would be the yeah, that would be the way for me to be uh, to be present here. Um, so there is one that is a bit uh, tricky, and I'm going to go back to neutral. And that's uh, Aquitania. You realize that it's 1-1, one, one, so it doesn't really matter. As long as I have one dot here, or if I fully control, it, I don't get more or less VP. But if I have nothing here, uh, I wouldn't get that uh, that point for presence. Uh, OK. So that's the, the objective of the game. Uh, as you can see, just for, for uh, the governance point, that uh, I have some minus, uh, minus numbers for uh, Provincia um, uh, regions. And that just means that if I don't keep control of them, I will lose a governance point. And that's where uh, you'll see the Aquitania tribe will come in and sometimes be annoying and start uh, attacking Volcae and stuff like this. 
Uh, good. But now that we know the objective, I think we can go through the, the sequence of play so you understand how you're going to be able to take some actions and uh, how we're going to how we're going to fight uh, for control overall. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the first thing that we'll do is uh, we'll uh, draw Gallic reinforcements. So Gallic reinforcements is just you are going to draw uh, three tribes. And, uh, and maybe I can show what the tribes looks like. Can I draw them? Yes, I'm allowed to. So you have this uh, draw pile here, and you're going to draw three of them randomly. And a tribe is uh, pretty um, uh, pretty simple. So you have the name of the tribe on the top. Uh, and then you have its combat factor that is on the bottom left. And then you have uh, the movement factor uh, that is on the bottom right. And then the small number that you see, the small one on top of the four, that gives you the number of free roll that you're going to be able to have in combat. But I will explain this later. And then the number in white is just an identifier that tells you what's the number of the region. So you know that the picton are 17, and you look, 17 is here. Uh, so what you'll do is uh, you'll choose any city in the picton region. Uh, you will place a fortified town and place the tribe on it. Uh, and you'll do this three times. You do have a choice, though. You can decide to keep uh, one of those tribes in the Gallic uh, console box. Uh, and basically, what you can see the Gallic Council box as is a bit of a reservoir for you of strength. And you can uh, potentially store um, uh, 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 influence markers there to, uh, to, to, uh, to use them uh, in one go in a future turn, or, uh, or potentially place tribes that you weren't able to place or something like this, or that you didn't thought was a good time to place at that specific point in time to reactivate them afterwards. If you draw, uh, and I'm going to take uh, an example here, if you draw one of the tribes that, uh, let's take here the Lingones. So Lingones would be here in that area, so the, the uh, right side of area 11. Uh, if it was fully ROM controlled, then you wouldn't be able to have one uh, space that would be eligible for you to place that tribe. In that case, it will take a step loss, and it will be added to the submitted tribes here. So that's the thing. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I will reinforce. Uh, I will send back to, uh, hmm. no, I don't know how do I do that. Just going to drag and drop them, yeah. Uh, so that would be the, um, the reinforcement uh, phase. And I'm going to go back to neutral control here. So that's the first thing that you do. Uh, then I have my Roman replacements. And my Roman replacements are two steps that I can use to uh, reinforce my legion. So I have two of them. But to be able to use them, that legion that I'm reinforcing needs to be able to trace supply back to, uh, uh, to Rome. But that's pretty straightforward. I need to have an uninterrupted line of either uh, spaces with my own um, influence marker or empty spaces that goes from where I want to reinforce down to Rome. So just making a line of any length. Uh, then I place Caesar. So Caesar might stay in Rome. So if I roll a, die, a d6 and I roll a 1, it will stay in Rome for my first action round. And I will place him on the second one. Uh, but that's pretty much it. And then I draw some legates. And the legates are the generals that are going to help me in my campaign. So they are small Caesars, you could say, that help me to move legions around uh, and have their own common factors. Uh, and then once this is the when this is done, we each uh, draw eight cards. Uh, and once you have eight cards in your hand, you're going to be able to have uh, what is called the Gallic muster. Uh, and the Gallic muster phase will enable you to uh, move all of your tribes up to three movement points. You cannot trigger fights with it, uh, but you can just move around to prepare your first action round. Um, and once this is done, we go to the core of the game. And the core of the game is each of us playing cards to take different kind of actions. And this is most of the time that we're going to spend is going to play cards to take actions. Uh, you're going to start unless I use my winter campaign card, uh, which I might have or not have. Um, and what you do when you play a card is you can do uh, different kind of things. And in a very classic CDG fashion, if an event is neutral of, or of your faction, you could use the event. Uh, and if not, you're going to use the ops point. The thing that is important is that even if you use a card of my faction and you use it for the ops point, the event will not be triggered. So you don't really have to worry about this. It's just the value that is important. Uh, and then what you do with the actions. So on the player aid, and I think I'm going to bring the player aid here. Let me open it up. 
yeah, here is the player aid, so people can actually watch what I show. Uh, you have actually everything, the sequence of play and the list of actions, uh, and the kind of actions that you're going to be able to take uh, that are uh, using your, uh, your ops point are pretty straightforward. Either you activate a leader or uh, a unit to move, uh, and you're going to move up to the movement allowance that you have. And if you end your move uh, where there is an enemy unit, you will trigger a battle. And I'll talk about battles afterwards. But that's the first thing that you're going to be able to do. And while you move, you can do different things. So you can go from one point to another. Uh, if the line is dotted, it will cost you two movement points. And while you move, you can actually remove um, some influence markers. So I'm just going to give a small example of this. Uh, so let's say I have my pal here with Caesar. And you have a uh, goal control here. So my first move would be to go from here to here. So that will cost me one um, movement point. And as you can see with Caesar, I have five. Then I could spend two to remove uh, that uh, marker. So shift it back to neutral, con to neutral control. So that would be one, two, three. And then I could do four, five. So yeah, so while you move, you can actually take political actions while you're moving. Uh, so thing, one thing that is important and that will be a big part of the asymmetry that there is between uh, the two of us, you can see that on Caesar on the top right uh, in the box, uh, there is the six, um, number six, and that means that I can move with Caesar up to six combat units. Um, I could have more, but if I have more, then each movement will cost me one extra uh, movement point. But I can move up to six units. And in that case, I have uh, six units with me, which means that I can do all of my moves uh, uh, at my yeah, at the full extent. Uh, when you move, there is something that is pretty important, uh, especially for me. Um, actually, there is one that is for you and one that is for me, is that you can uh, uh, try to intercept or try to evade. Uh, so let's say you have the Avernis here that were placed here. If you move to a space that is, that is adjacent to mine, for example, you move here and you don't have a control marker on this one, I could roll uh, to attempt to intercept you. And for me to intercept, what I would do is roll two dice, add it uh, my battle rating. So for season is three. And if I roll nine or higher, I would be able to intercept you. And I will move, stop your movement, and will trigger a combat. Uh, so that's uh, something that is quite important for the Roman uh, because the idea is that sometimes you might want to try to intercept the, uh, the goals here and there. Uh, but uh, there is also something that is, is going to be more important for you, and that's going to be the evasion. <clears throat> and that's basically me when I'm moving in a space where you are, you have the same mechanic to evade. So you're going to roll the dice, so two dice. Uh, and if you do a nine or higher, you're going to be able to evade. And you have different modifiers. Uh, and the modifiers are, uh, if I remember well, that if, uh, if you're moving in a space that you control, in that case, you will have plus two. Uh, and let me think, is there anything else? There is the commanding battle, the commander battle rating. There is plus two if you're moving to a, uh, to a space you control. Oh, and you have minus two if you're trying to move away through a rough pass. But yeah, so I will try to intercept. You will try to evade, but we both can do both. It's just that you will do more one than, than I will do. So that's the first thing that you can do. And that's going to be, um, that's going to be uh, moving your troops. Uh, and fighting. There is another kind of fighting, fighting that is sieges. So I will do sieges either in fortified towns uh, or in strongholds. So the strongholds are the um, uh, hexagon pieces. Uh, and basically, that costs me three um, uh, movement points to be able to do it. So with Caesar, I could move for one movement point, then use three movement points to start a siege. But I need three movement points to start a siege. So depending on how far a fortified city is, I might have to go there, then wait for another turn to trigger a siege. Yeah. And then when I do a siege, it's a different kind of resolution. Uh, so that's the first thing that we can do. We can move. Uh, and then there is the two actions that are more related to um, what I would call uh, political kinds of actions. And that's going to be place influence markers and convert influence markers. So to place an influence marker, that costs one. Uh, and when you're placing into your, your opponent's provinces, you need to place them either in a place where you have a combat unit or adjacent to a, um, an influence marker that you already have. So for example, here, uh, if I use one point to place an influence marker, I could place it here uh, because it is adjacent to, uh, to one that I already have. But I couldn't place it here 
for example, because yeah, it's not adjacent to uh, uh, an influence marker that I already have, and it's not um, it's not on a space where I have a combat unit. And you can chain, so that's pretty important also. Uh, if I placed one here, I could place one here. So in the in the with in the same action round. So I think that's it. I need to remove this. Uh, so that's it for the placing. Uh, is there anything else that is important for the placing? And you, of course, in your own region, you're completely open in placement. So you could decide to place one here, uh, even if you didn't have anything adjacent. But you have the same constraints when you're placing in the right area. And then the final action, the final standard action, and that's going to be convert. So if I had a combat unit here and you had your uh, your influence marker here, what I could do is spend one point to flip it to my side. And then there is something that might be important for you to know is when I move and when you move, I can drop off some units. So for example, I could do a move like this, then leave one aside and continue my move with just all of those units. And then in a subsequent turn, use two ops to, uh, to flip those two. So there is those kind of things that you can do. So I can drop off and pick up um, as I wish. Uh, yeah, so that's moving, placing, converting. And then you have Gallic special actions, but I don't think that you use them in the first three turns. But just for you to know, uh, you can activate the, Gal the Gallic console box. So as I was saying, you can either store tribes or store influence markers in the Gallic console box. And for one action point, you could release part or all of them at once. Uh, to place them all at once on the board. So that's the thing that I think that you can do. Uh, then you can devastate the countryside, but that will only be the case when you have Vercingetorix uh, on the board. And Vercingetorix will come on turn five. I don't think we'll go to turn five tonight. Uh, and then you have declare the major revolt, um, and that will uh, help you to bring um, uh, everything you want, uh, all the submitted tribes and uh, back to the board. But I don't think that this uh, is something that, that will happen in the first three turns. So that's it for the strategy phase. So we'll play cards and we do one of those three things most of the time, moving, placing, converting. So that's any question at this stage? Um, I assume there's also events on the cards that we can play. Uh, yeah, there is events uh, on your cards that you can play definitely. Uh, and I'm going full now. So there's someone who's asking if we could zoom in and I'm wondering, is this uh, zooming enough or do you want me also to zoom the map on uh, on Vessel? I guess that for now that will do the trick, I guess. So what was your question, Sean? Sorry. Uh, event play on the card. So I assume when we're in the strategy phase rather than using the action points, we can play the event. Uh, yes, yeah, that would be it. So when you de when you decide to play the uh, when you decide to play the event, uh, you won't be able to play the ops unless the card specifically says so. So you have some cards that tells you you do this that part of the event, then you can play an action point. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, usually it's uh, it's directly uh, it's directly specified. Uh, cool. Maybe I'll zoom a little bit on the map a bit more. That might be a bit too much. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's better. I don't know. Not sure. OK. Um, yes, and now I guess we need to talk about battles. Uh, battles are super simple uh, in this game. Uh, and the way we do uh, battles is uh, if I end uh, a move in a place where you are, uh, what we're going to do is look at the, um, the total value uh, of uh, each of us. And in the player aid, uh, there is a table. Uh, and I'm going to bring up the player head right now. Choop, choop. And here it is. So you have the combat result table here. And depending on the strength of your army, you're going to roll on different columns. Uh, so where I start, I start with uh, six legions. That's going to be 12 strength points, meaning that I will roll on the 11 12, uh, on the 11 12 column. You're going to roll 2d6, uh, 2D, uh, 2D and depending on the value that you get, it will give you the information of the number of steps uh, that you're going to that you're going to inflict to your opponent. Uh, so that's basically what you do. So we both roll. 
uh, and after that, there is a reroll phase, and this is what I was uh, when I was talking about the the combat rating of uh, of each of the of each of the of each of the commanders. So I'm going to go full screen and zoom in a bit more here. So as you can see, Caesar has a, combat, a battle rating of three. The Averni have a battle rating of one, meaning that I will be able to reroll up to three dice, and you will be able to roll up to one. So let's say you roll a three and a two, and I roll a four and a six, or something like this. That would be really good for me. But basically, as the attacker, I have up to three rerolls that I can ask, and I can make you reroll dice, or I can reroll my own dice. I will ask you to do one. You will ask me to do one or do one yourself. And then it will go back and forth until all of us have used our rerolls. So I usually have a big advantage uh, because I have better commanders. Uh, but that's going to be one of the things uh, that we're going to do. And then there is something that is super important, and that's the Roman Legion discipline, is that even if I roll lower than a three, my score will always be a minimal of three. So the minimal roll I can do in a fight is a six. Uh, so yes. And then there is one thing that is a bit of a, a trick. As you can see here, I have the Tenth Legion. So the Tenth Legion is quite legendary, a very good legion, and it has a small star on the top right. And that would be, give me a bonus reroll uh, after we've done all of our rerolls. If I think I still need one, I can activate this legion to do an additional reroll. Uh, and if I if the dice that is rerolled is a one or a six, it will automatically just take a step loss. And you have one of those units also as the Galax, and that would be the Nervis in uh, uh, the Nervis in Belgica. Uh, so that's for the fight. Uh, one small rule for the fight, if there is a, um, a force ratio between the two of us that is 3 to 1, uh, we don't resolve the fight and you automatically get submitted. Uh, so that's also something that is uh, quite uh, important. Uh, and then the second type of fight is going to be the siege. So let's say I'm attacking a, a fortified town here. Uh, I was here. So in that case, let's go through the, the whole action. I will use one action point to move, and then I will use three action points to start a siege. Uh, and when I do a siege, what I do is I roll uh, two dice uh, and compare it uh, to the to the combat ratio that we have. So I'm going to bring up the player aid once again, and there is a siege table on the bottom right. Uh, and in that case, so you have a value of two, I would have a value of 12 in that case, so that wouldn't work. But uh, let's say I only have uh, just a few units. Choop, choop. So it would be four to two. So I would roll on the two to one uh, table. And what I'm going to try to have is a number of siege uh, point that will uh, be the value of your fortress. So on the top right here, you have three. So I'm trying to accumulate three siege points. So I would roll two dice and see how many hits I get. So that would be the, the number on the left side of the dash. And how many siege points do I get? That would be the, the number on the right side. Uh, and as soon as I get to three, uh, this gets removed. Uh, and one thing that is super important is that the fortified town is associated with the tribe that it is uh, linked to. So when you place a tribe uh, on the map, you place it on the fortified on the fortified town. If you move away with your tribe and I and I kill it uh, in a battle, then the fortified town disappears. Or if I take the fortified town and your unit is somewhere else, uh, the unit uh, also gets removed from the game. So the two are uh, linked to each other. Uh, okay, Whew, that's a lot of information, and I will <laughs> go through it again. Yeah, I'm really sorry if I need to drink something. Uh, uh, so that's, yeah, I think I covered the battles roughly, I covered the sieges roughly, and I will re-explain them once we get there. But basically, we play cards, we move, we fight, we place, we convert, and that's pretty much it. And then there is, once we've done all of this eight times, the thing that's going to happen is we're going to have a winter phase. Uh, and the winter phase is uh, all the siege uh, are lifted. So if you didn't do, if you didn't finish a siege uh, uh, during your turns, then it's all lost. So you need to finish sieges. If not, you're going to lose a lot of points for nothing. Um, then you have all the mercenaries and the minor tribes that go back to their holding boxes. All of your tribes will go back to their fortified cities. Uh, and there is a special rules for Versingetorix and Ambiorix, uh, but those we won't have to go through with that. Then uh, there is the Roman winter se uh, segment. Caesar will go back to Rome. Uh, I can keep one of my legates uh, and put the other one in the draw cup. And then what I can do is um, I can march my legion. So as I was saying at the beginning, you have your uh, spring master and you can move up to three. I can do that during winter. So I can move up to three with all of my units. And the thing that is going to be important for me is that uh, 
if I stay in, um, in an area that is uh, under your influence, I will take a step loss. Uh, if I stay in an area that is empty, I can store only two legions on that space. And if I place them on an area that uh, has my control, I can store up to four. And then uh, we check for isolation. And isolation is something that is pretty standard that you have in Washington's war, that you have in Hannibal. Uh, we check if all of your um, influence markers can trace back uh, to supply. And for you, supply, that would be strongholds, fortified town. And for me, uh, that would be combat units and Rome. Uh, and if you cannot do that, we do first with the Romans, then with the Gallic. Uh, those uh, IMs, so those influence markers, get removed from the board. Then we check for governance. So that's the number of governance points that I have. I'll check how many governance points I get for the turn. Uh, we check for victory. And once this is done, it's the end of winter. We clean up the board, remove devastation things. Uh, and it's the end of the turn. And we go back to, uh, to the beginning, which is uh, the reinforcement phase. And that is it for a very general uh, rules explanation. And once again, I think that in the in the play, it should be fine. And I spoke for half an hour. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired, Sean. I hate so this. So we just call this whole thing off. We're done. See you, oh, guys. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye-bye. No. <laughs> yes. Uh, Joe is asking me to drink more apple juice. Yes, I would do that. Yeah, I definitely need apple juice. So any questions, Sean, or any questions in the stream? For me, no, I, it'll probably take a couple of turns for me to get my head around what's going on. Um, at least I, I don't have the beer influence that I had the other night playing The King is Dead. So yeah, hopefully yeah. I'll have a bit more of a, um, you know, a sharper focus. Do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I guess then what, what's probably the best thing that we can do is um, is uh, is start with the, the reinforcement phase and... And see how it goes. So as I was saying, first thing that we're going to do is get a reinforcement. So uh, on the top of the of the of the mod, you can see that there is uh, a small uh, a small button uh, with a Gallic tribe on it called Gallic Uprising. If you click on this, uh, you have a pile. And what I would like you to do is maybe draw them on the board so everyone sees them, and you are going to draw three of them. So you've got the Eburon, Senones, and Atrebat. Okay, so you have two Belgian um, uh, tribes uh, and one Celtic tribe. So we're going to put them where they're supposed to be, and then you'll choose. So you've got those ones here. Uh, the Eburon are going to be up north over there. And then you've got Atrebat just here. So the first thing that you're going to decide is where you're going to place their fortified town, and then you're going to place them on it. All right, so let's go with here. Yep. Nice, next to two strong two strongholds. So if I want to go, I will have to do the whole, yeah, go to the Magino line here. You're using a port. Nice. Yeah, I think anyone in this area is going to be vulnerable to Caesar very early on. Uh, yes, the the Senones. There, I'm going to start a siege straight away against them because wherever they are, they are at two movements points away. So that would be two plus three to start the siege. So it really doesn't matter where they are. I will start and besiege them as soon as I can. So I might as well at least put you. At your limit. Yeah. Cool. So that was um, phase one. Then I have my replacements, but not during turn one. Uh, so Caesar starts on the board for turn one. And now I have to draw my legates. Uh, so I'm going to click on the legate box. And we're going to draw two legates. And I hope I don't get two shitty legates. One, two. And I'm going to unmask them. So I got Cicero and Crassus. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, OK. Both of them are pretty cool. I think I'm going to keep Crassus in the south with those two legions here. Uh, and I think I'm going to explain also the, the choices that I make. I'm going to put him here uh, because his first mission is going to move um, straight to Caesar's Pass. Uh, so that's what he's going to do. One, two. Yeah, he won't be able to do Stitch in one go, but that's going to be his mission. And then Cicero is going to 
is going to be with Caesar, just in case I need a, I need to split my troops. But I don't think I will have to do it on turn one. We'll see. Uh, so that's my uh, Roman legate phase. And then each of us are going to take eight cards. So you can click on uh, your uh, uh, your uh, Gallic hand. I have my Roman hand here. And when you click on a, on one of those red boxes, ah, cool. you're going to get the card. And I have a very, very good hand. And I'm going to hide it now. Yeah, mine's rubbish. So <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Absolutely rubbish. I think I'm going to... Fuck you up, Sean. That's gonna be pretty yeah, brutal. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm doomed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna poor be awesome. Play. Poor play and poor. Card I think it's going to be. Yeah, I think it's gonna. It's your first big mistake, Sean. Is is being really bad at drawing cards. I think it's one of your <laughs> really bad at this. I'm gonna zoom in here. Uh, so the first thing that I have to decide is. Um, uh, because now we're going into the... Oh, no, not yet. Uh, before we play any card, you have your uh, Gallic Spring Master Phase. Uh, and that means that you're going to have the opportunity to move each of your tribe uh, up to three movement points. Um, all right, so let's... Let's go... And now, when just to be clear, you don't have to, but you can. Well, but I think I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep all all this tribe down in um Sinon's, Sinon's, whatever it is. Yeah. He can just stay there and he's gonna get wiped out anyway, so he might as well at least put up a little bit of a fight. But yeah, see see him as a as a roadblock, you could say. On my yeah. way to on my way to Belgium. Oh, and I'm going to serve myself some, to, some up. Could move him out to try and intercept, but then you just go around him anyway. So I'll just leave him sitting there. Um, now, influence markers. Yep. Placing them. Is it in the space where I've got units? Oh no, that's only for 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 me. Uh, so when you're okay. placing them in a in a um, in a in a country, you could say that is not yours. Then it needs to be uh, on a space where you have a unit or adjacent to a space you already have one. But basically, uh, Belgica and Celtica are are completely yours, so you can place them wherever you want. I have that constraint. Okay. Um, let's bring him down here. Oh, so it's up, you can do up to three moves if you want. Don't really have any. Yeah, okay. So that's one, two, three. Good. Do you want to do any other? Oh, yeah, okay. Bold. Okay. Whoa, that's I didn't terrible. expect that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a plot twist. Okay, so uh, Sean moved his two Gallic tribes to, I guess, put you in a position to try to lift a siege that I might start straight away. That would be... Interesting. I didn't expect that to happen. Okay, good. Uh, good to know. So that was your spring master phase. Now uh, the next phase is going to be a strategy. So we have all of our cards. And now the first decision that I have to make is if I have the winter, uh, the winter campaign card, I can decide to go first. But as you might know, yeah, you have a question? Where do we play the cards in this mod? Oh, you would ju just drag and drop them on the map so the, the people in the stream will see them. Okay. Uh, and I think that what I'm going to do is... Uh, uh, I, uh, I will not be playing a, a winter campaign card, so you can start and play your first card of the game. And of course, if when I'm now that I'm not explaining, I have more time to look at the chat and everything. So if you have questions in the chat or uh, any comments, just put them in, and I will, uh, and I will uh, answer them live. And yes, James, that was my whole strategy. If I play Caesar, I'm always happy, whatever the outcome. All right, so let's go. And. Me playing one of your cards doesn't doesn't trigger the event. Unless, yeah, unless it's a surprise. No surprises. You can no no no, no, no. Yeah, 
Yeah, you so have I no risk of yeah. Play that. So you played Caesar's Lieutenant. Um, so yeah, and that was yeah that would ha have actually enabled me to bring Labienus uh, to the board, which is a pretty good legate. But in that case, you're playing it, uh, so you're going to play for two ups. The bonus on the top right is something that reminds you that when you play a bonus card, you will play. The, you have the potential to play the event, then use the two action points. But it's uh, it's not the case now. So you can uh, you can go ahead and uh, and play your two ups. The movement for this tribe, this attributes, that's just one, isn't it? Uh, which one? Uh, uh, the attribat. Uh, no, the the movement factor is three. Three. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the bottom bottom right, isn't it? Yeah. So I could bring him here. You could do that. Yes. So that would cost you one um, action point to activate that uh, that card and move him here. So now you have a big stack here. Let's just go with what? Okay. What's your plan, Sean? What's your plan? I, don't really have yeah. <laughs> I, I hear you. I, I hear you scheming, uh, and I don't like this at all. Build up some influence. Uh, then you have yeah, you have one point to build up some influence, so you can play uh, one. In, you can place one influence marker wherever you want. Yeah, no, drop that one there. I keep forgetting. Where are you placing it? Uh, uh, up here. Yeah, there's no way to. I keep going to do the. Oh yeah. Button. Okay. Yeah. In Treveri. Okay. Uh, good. Then I'm going to discard that card and I'm going to play my first card. Uh, and I'm going to play that two ups card here. So burn the countryside. That's an event for you. Uh, so I'm not using it for the event. I have two APs. Uh, the first AP that I'm going to use is going to activate Crassus and I'm going to move him to Caesar's Pass. Uh, so that costs me two movement points. And I cannot start the siege of the stronghold because that will require me three. I already used two. I only have two left. So unfortunately, uh, that's the only thing that I can do with him. But now I'm going to remind you of a rule that you forgot. I'm going to activate Caesar. And he has five movement points. One, two, three, four, and five. Yeah, I was not expecting that at all. Yes, Caesar is fast. <laughs> He's extremely <laughs> fast. So there is one thing that you can do to be totally uh, transparent with you is you can try to evade that battle. Uh, so for you to evade, you will roll uh, two uh, d6. Uh, and if you roll nine or higher, you're going to be able to evade. And you rolled a three. You straight away decided you wanted to try to evade. I don't think there's much yeah. I can do. Sorry. Yeah, I yeah. Have a and you will have a you will have had a plus two if you move to um to an area that you controlled, uh, but even even that that would be two plus one three plus two five. So you would have failed your evasion. So that means that yeah. we're gonna have our first fight of the game. Cool. Uh, so what you're gonna do? Too. Yeah, that's gonna be a brutal fight. So you have um uh, four um strength points, and I have the full strength of Rome coming to you. That's 12 points, and Caesar himself coming to kick your ass. So it's going to be pretty tough. So I'm going to bring the, the player aid here next to the fight so uh, people can follow. And I'm going to zoom in a bit next to the fight. Here we are. So I'm on the 12 column. So the 12th column is going to be this one, and you are going to four column. And we're going to both roll 2d6, and I'm going to roll mine. So I do a 6 and a 3. So that's going to be 9. And 9 is going to inflict you three casualties, or three step loss. Yep. And you're going to roll, roll two. Yeah. Double Look one. at these rolls. 
Snake Eyes. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a start. This is, this is going so well. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. So just uh, just for clarification, in case you didn't read it, but uh, rolling two, do the double one is not good. Um, at your strength point, that means that you're going to give me zero casualty. Because I am the attacker, uh, I have up to three. Um, I, I need to choose first if I want to do reroll. Uh, and I can make you reroll up to three times. That's the battle rating of Caesar. Your Eburones here, they have a battle rating of one. Uh, so they can reroll one dice. So my first reroll, uh, I'm going to use it to, for myself. Uh, it's a bit useless. It's a bit like passing because I have enough. But I will reroll my three. And I'm not taking any risk because a legion cannot roll less than a three anyway. So I'm going to use my first reroll to reroll my three. And I roll a one. Doesn't change anything. It's still six plus three, nine. Now you have one reroll. And you can either make me reroll one dice, one die, or you can reroll one of your dice. I'll reroll one of mine. Let's see if I can make it more than a one at least. Yeah. Hey. Oof. Good. So now I have two rerolls. Uh, and you don't have any more. So with my uh, second reroll, I'm going to ask you to reroll your six. And that's four, all in all. Uh, and you are at four strength points. And I'm very happy with that result. And I'm going to pass with my uh, last reroll. So you are on the table four. You have four, you rolled a four. So that's zero hits. And I'm on the 12. Uh, and, I re and I rolled nine. So that's going to be three steps loss. Which reminds me that we played for the fight, but it was actually a bit dumb because there is something that I told you is that if the ratio between you and I is three to one, it would have been instantly submitted. So it was just that a was practice fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, that's so, what you were thinking. So, they just go so to you're me. actually not. Yeah. In fact, in, uh, you're actually not dying. Uh, three to one. You're just going to be reduced and move to the submitted box. Yeah. So my bad. But it was just to to demonstrate the um, yeah the, how the fight is actually What's working. But see, this is good because now I've got my snake eyes out of the way. You've yep. tested it. It's uh, it's all double sixes from here on in. Yeah, yeah. You have to spend your bad rolls start uh, first. That's a, <laughs> that's a really good strategy. I think it's very smart. Very smart. So that was my cards. I did two action points: one for uh, Crassus uh, and one for Caesar. And now it's your turn to play a card. Uh, Joe is asking, could Fred make Sean reroll out of pity? I could have. The thing is that we were not even supposed to roll in the first place because the, the ratio was three to one. But I, I, I could have done it. And I think it would have been probably the, the, guy, the kind thing to do. And it's nice, Joe, that you remind me to, of my of how mean I can be. But and I, I should make some efforts. I, I don't, oh, I don't by the way. Pity rolls. By the way, you remember I told you that um, your tribe and your fortified city is oh, connected? Yes. Yeah, so your fortified city in Eburones is going to go back to neutral. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to actually play this one for the event. So you're playing this one for the event. I'm going to zoom in for people to see it. So that's diplomacy. So you can convert an enemy influence marker into a friendly influence marker in any space in Gaul or Provincia free of enemy combat unit. That's a typical so, dick move. So if I go neutral here, those, these would, uh, the ones in Sequani would be now isolated, wouldn't they? Uh, you know, wait, you convert, so you don't remove it. You actually put it to go. Ah, even better. Yeah, yeah, even better. And no, they are not out of supply because they can trace back to um, to Rome uh, through Alesia. So it's, if, if it's empty, it's fine. Yeah, you have to. I can, I can, tr I can trace the supply line through empty uh, through empty spots. Okay, so I've got to have dudes sitting on that space. Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna isolate Sequani, you would have to place uh, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So that would be isolation uh, okay. of Sequani. Yeah. Cut it away. Yep. Fair enough. Okay. Cool. Probably not the best use of that, but it's all good. Actually, it's it's a really powerful card, but it's usually a good thing to keep for um, for the last action round because it can be a it can be a surprise uh, a surprise a surprise action. Okay, now I'm gonna 
I'm gonna give you another small surprise because you're giving me quite the opening. So I'm gonna, hmm. And I'm gonna play, oh, this is so beautiful. Constant as the Northern Star. So I'm gonna play it for the event. I'm gonna activate Caesar, and then I'm gonna be able to activate up to uh, use up to three action points. Uh, so first, I'm gonna activate Caesar. One, two, three, four, three, four, three, four, five. Yeah, three, four, five. You remember your fortified city and your tribe are connected. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and now I have three action points. I'm going to use one action point to activate uh, Crassus. So Crassus is besieging that stronghold here called Caesar Pass. And when you're besieging a stronghold, you just need to have at least two strength. And when you roll, you roll on the uh, 1.5 to 1 uh, on the table. So I'm going to bring the player aid here. Scroll down to this. And I'm going to roll 2d6. Oh, that sucks so much. <laughs> Uh, so that's three. I don't get a hit, but I don't gain a siege point. So that's lame. And I need two siege points to uh, to remove that stronghold here. So that was one action point for nothing. And then what will I do? So then I have two action points. And I think that for my action points, I'm going to... I'm going to take this space and this space. So, and I will disc discard my card. Joe has made a very valid point that this is just fancy go, and you're tricking me. And he's yeah. right. Yeah. Now that, I, yeah, it's now that more, I've read yeah. that, I can't unsee it, and I'm doomed. I was doomed before I ever picked up the rules. And I, I must admit, I'm pretty good at playing the I am game because of, because of that. But it's not really good. That, that's not totally true. It shares some of the mechanics, especially for isolation and everything. But um, the fact that I have to place um, uh, adjacent, uh, it, I, for me as the Roman, cannot play too much uh, on my go side. But as the as the as as the Gallic player, it's actually very useful to know how to play Go. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Especially in a in a board like this, because Hannibal is very elongated, so you don't really have the depth that you could have on the. I mean, really the the geographical depth to play Go. Uh, Washington's War is also a bit yeah, weirdly shaped, but this one is almost a eleven by eleven Go board. So yeah. <laughs> um. Sorry, I'm just looking at these cards. Oh, those are pretty good. So this one, you're going to have to play it for one-ups because it's an event for me. Mm. I've really, really made a mess of this very quickly. The, the thing is that when you're playing the the, the Gallic player in that, in that game is that it's it enables you to make some mistakes without having to pay a heavy price for it. Uh, whereas when you're playing the Roman players, uh, a mistake can end the game in turn one. So so it's a bit more flexible. So I think it's not that bad. And I think in turn two you will will yeah you can definitely come back. Oh, and I see that I have some messages on Discord. Point in moving this guy away from. Uh, oh yeah, eBay is literally watching on on his TV. So some people that are playing, <laughs> complaining about the the size. I think you should just do like eBay. You just put it on your big flat screen, on, and then you shouldn't have any issue to see the map. Probably so what are you going to use your your up for? I'll just. 
I think I'll just play some influence. That's about all I can see me yeah. being able to do. Um, I'm gonna place it. So when you were thinking, so what do you know where you want to place it? Um. So, um, yeah, do you want me to give you a, potentially an advice? If you're going to place an IM, I would potentially place it in Alesia, so just north to the place where you placed your one previously, because now that specific um, influence marker is going to be very f easy for me to cut off. If you place him in Alesia, you have three ways to go away, and I would have to play a lot of right. um, uh, points to actually uh, to actually uh, make a pocket out of, out of it, yeah. I think that's that's probably for the best. And then it gives you an option to potentially try to block me so I don't get too much control because you're going to try to limit my th my spread because I only have to uh, uh, to place adjacent. So you have to also to think about this. And then there is a question by Joe that I think is a really good question. So uh, is it similar enough to Hannibal and Washington's war to transfer some knowledge between them? Um, I would say yes, definitely. Uh, the combat resolution is different in uh, in in Hannibal because it has a deck uh, system, a resolution system where you get some cards and you do some different kind of actions. But uh, most of the game is more or less the same, uh, with the same dynamic of influence markers and fighting and leaders. So a lot of uh, of those games share similarities. Um, so you have. Um, Hannibal that has this. Uh, Washington's War also has this. Uh, it's just that in those two, the political game also has a, a, I don't know, a tiny bit more complexity because you're actually, no, it's actually more or less the same. It's just that there is a, maybe a bit more bookkeeping where this one is, uh, you don't have something on the side to track the control of each region. But it's actually, yeah, definitely similar enough that you can transfer knowledge. And then there is a third one uh, that, people often forget, uh, and that's successors, which is basically this system, but applied to a, a multiplayer uh, game. So it's more or less the same system, but uh, you can play, I think, up to four players, five. I don't know if James is in the chat and still watching. I know that James is uh, is playing successors right now, and, uh, and he will be able to say if it's four or five players. But same system, uh, just a higher player count. So yeah, definitely you can you can transfer. So you played your uh, your action points. I will play mine. Um, and I think uh, yeah, she have a, too many uh, this. I have too many too many good cards that I would have been able to use at another point, so I almost regret it. Uh, right. So I'm going to play Trumpets of War. So yeah, rich people problem. Uh, so an event for you, <laughs> uh, that is actually a pretty good event, uh, especially on turn two when you have a bit more tribes on the board. But I'm going to use it for the three action points. The first thing that I'm going to do is attempt to take Caesar's Pass um, here. So I'm going to do my siege. I'm going to roll two d6, and I roll an eight. And an eight is, oh, fuck. So I can take one step loss and uh, two siege points. Actually, it's not that bad. So I'm going to take the step loss here, reduce. And then this gets removed. And that means that I get my first victory point here. So I get one VP. So that's my can first action point. Yeah. That's not reclaimable for me. Once you've got that, you've got no. that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Once I and it's the same for the Germania campaign and the Britannia campaign. Once it's done, it's done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You cannot really take them. The second thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna yeah kill your Atrebas straight away, and I'm gonna do one two, and then I have enough action point to trigger the siege because I have five movements, so enough movement points to do. So one two three four five. And here, once again, I'm uh, at two to one. So I'm going to, a three to one. So I'm going to submit you straight away. So this is going to become neutral. And uh, those guys are going to become submitted. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And uh, yeah. 
Uh, and then I have a third point. And with my third point, I'm going to place uh, an influence markers in the port that I'm in. And that will give me the opportunity to talk about something that we haven't talked about within the rules uh, when during the rules teach, and that's the um, uh, naval supremacy uh, thing. So there are two seas, so Oceanus Britannicus uh, and uh, Oceanus Atlanticus here. And the faction that controls the most port on those has the supremacy. And actually, I have Roman uh, naval supremacy on the Atlantic because I control two ports uh, in Aquitania and then just up north, and you only control one in Veneti. And then you still have Gallic naval supremacy because you have one in Veneti here, and I only just took the control of one here. But as soon as I would get a second one, I would get Roman naval, naval supremacy. And that can give me a few advantages, uh, especially during sieges, uh, uh, with specific tribes and stuff like this. Cool. Uh, and I will discard that card because I activated Crassus, Caesar, and placed the points. Yeah, I'm good. And let's look a bit at the wider board. Two, three, four, five. Ah, tick move. So you played German auxiliary cavalry for the for the point. Yeah. Yeah, and you took control of the port. Yeah. I okay. Feel very limited with my um number of tribes. Yeah, if you lose two, <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty tough. That's true. Uh, that's true. That's true. Hmm. I'm going to use this card that I will not have you use for during that turn. So that's the naval supremacy event. Uh, but I'm not planning on making a siege uh, in a port anymore. So I'm going to use the two action points. And uh, I'm going to use one to activate Caesar. And I'm going to start the Britannia campaign. So one point to go here. Then two point to move across. And now I'm going to have to roll 1d6. If I roll 1 to 5, it's all good. If I roll a 6, I have to go back. And I roll a 2, so that's good. So that was 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going to use two points to remove that marker. And now I have to, and actually, no, I don't. Now, normally, I would have to roll to see if the Bretons um, uh, attacked me. The thing is that I have to roll higher than my army, and my army is uh, 12 strength. So there is no possibility for me. So I would not trigger them. So that was one, two, three, five. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and then I have one action point remaining. One, two, three, four. And I think that with this, I will activate Crassus. One, two, uh, one, two. Uh, One, two. I'm wondering what I should do with him. I'm going to tempt you. Three, four. Good. And now it's your turn. That is perfect. Reading this card, just trying to get my head around. 
Yeah, so what you're thinking, I don't know. So I see that there are some uh, discussions. So yeah, James is confirming there is a lot of similarities to successors, uh, same design concepts. So yeah, definitely. James, do you know what's the, I, I forgot what was the player count for successors. Uh, I don't know, I thought it was four, but I wasn't sure. And yeah, I agree with you, Joe. I think that's the, the beauty of the series. And that's what, yeah, that's also why you like coin games. But uh, um, the idea that you're, the effort that you're gonna put into to learn a rule system, the fact that you can transfer it, because we're playing complex game that take a lot of time to in, like ingesting the and everything, it's, uh, it feels like it has more value to to go for an established system because then you can apply a lot of the efforts that you've already put into to play other games in other setup. And the fact that it covers from um, uh, from the war of the successors to uh, to Washington's war uh, is actually, it gives you a bit of the range of the of what the system can do. And I must say, I have an idea to for an adaptation of the system in a completely different setting. So I think that could be also interesting. Yeah, and James confirms four. Now, I don't really understand this card. I, yeah, I, put I it on his. It, it's, it, it's. Yeah, I so that's really a surprise. See any yeah. way I can use it. So the thing with surprise cards um, is what you can do is discard them to draw another card if you don't see any value for it. So you can discard them, draw another card, and then resume your action and by playing another card, any any card from your hand. So that's always an option so that you have that with one. those surprise cards. If you don't sure, see it happening, do that just cause... discard it. Yeah. All right. Not much better, but it'll do. Um, okay. It cannot be worse than zero action points. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's it. it oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I get the feeling that you're baiting me. You know what? I'm going to be impulsive. Let's have a fight. So you're doing one, two. Oh, stupid. Ooh. And what I'm going to do is... Oh, wait a minute. I forgot my troops here. Uh, I'm going to try to evade. Oh. oh, that's how it works, is it? So I see you, you're, you're isolated, and then you go, oh, no, 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 the troops were meant to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't have sent the general alone. Uh, well, I thought so, maybe you were, like it was a challenge. No, 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 no. That was just a, a, a vassal mistake, honest mistake. No, so I need to roll nine or higher. And because I'm going to the um, Sequani space, so uh, a space that I control, I'm going to have plus two here. So I... Oh, well. <laughs> So yeah, I definitely evade. So that costs you 1.2 points, and you can attempt to pursue and do uh, and do your third movement points and go and get me. Let's do it. Like, I'm going to get smashed, but let's do it. But before you do that, one thing that you need to consider is that if we fight in Sequani, because I control the Sequani uh, province, I would have plus two in my strength. Mm. So we would be five to five. Maybe not then. It's not that bad. And you have to think of it this way. I get two reinforcements every turn. So as long as you give me two hits or more, you're starting to wear me down to wear me down. No, In still, within the I course like of fighting. a whole turn. I like fighting. Let's do it. Yeah, you're going? Yeah. Okay, so in that case, you fight with five, uh, and I will not evade. I'm actually happy. I'm welcoming that fight, Sean. Uh, no, I have two surprised. and one, three and five, uh, plus two for the, yeah, so five overall. So you can discard this, and you can roll 2d6. So you roll a six, and then I roll 2d6, and I roll seven, and I'm going to bring the table. Where is the table? So at five, if you roll a six, that means that you're gonna give me one hit and we're both gonna give each other and I'm gonna and I roll the seven. So we are both gonna uh, yeah, give each other one hit. Uh, no, 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 wait, 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 before you oh. do that. Uh, you have, so you see the, um, the Senones, they have one potential oh, reroll and I have one reroll. Is there one dice that you wanna reroll? Or do you want to keep it this way? 
What do I get you to re-roll? You can get me to re-roll, yeah. But I remember that... Too. Either yeah. way, I'm, it's not going to make a massive difference to me if I roll Yeah, because one, if you if you make me re-roll my four, if you make me re-roll my four, it would stay a three worst-case scenario. So it would stay at six. So, yeah, and I'll yeah. re-roll my, my two because even if I roll a one... Yeah, it won't be that bad. Make a difference. And it's okay. <laughs> So four and it's two, definitely. so that's six. Uh, and what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to attempt to reroll my three because I cannot get worse than this yeah. because I would like to give you two hits. So I need just to do, if I would roll a four, that would be great. Oh, perfect. Right. So that's four and cool. six, 10. And that means that you're taking two hits and I take one. So I take one hit here and you take two hits. So the Senones are destroyed. So not submitted, they go into the in the tribes eliminated. Right. Oh, wait a minute, where is it? It should be on the one, yeah. yeah. And that means that your fortified CT is disappearing. Good, good, good. No. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, you actually have a... It's going well. For you? Yeah, I'm going to uh, finish my uh, Britannia campaign. So I'm going to use this card, but I'm not going to use the events because I don't need the, I don't need the, the German cavalry. Uh, so I'm going to use the one action point. I'm going to do one move here, uh, two move to go to neutral. So that's one, two, three. And then it's going to be four to go back. And I cannot cross because that costs me two. Uh, so that's everything that I could do for my moves, and then I'm going to discard this card. How useless are the Britons, though? They just sit there and watch it happen. Yeah, I'm yeah, actually wondering. The, um... I'm actually wondering that if if I remove all of your, and I don't know if someone knows the game, but it's not something that happened before. Uh, but what happens if you don't have any tribes anymore on the board? Well, I, yeah, I don't know because this is how bad I am. But you, you would get that two VP, don't you, in Britannia? Um, oh, yes, you're right. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. So I got the two VP, so I'm at three. Going to check the rules quickly for victory conditions. Ah, victory. Sweet, sweet victory. Tip, 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 tip. Oh, yeah, no, no. So I could have an automatic victory if during the political phase there were no fortified towns on the map and the Roman player controls the majority of provinces in Belgica, Celtica, Aquitania, and all of Provincia. So, yeah, you're you're still good. I don't really think I'm good. Yeah, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> Not super good, but you're, you're, you're still in the game. Let's play this. Are you playing it for the event? I think I will. So if so you I play it for the, the event, German yeah. So it's is. so it's that tribe here, uh, and you place them on one of those three strongholds to start their move, and then they can uh, they can move uh, up to three. Let's go up to here. Bring him down here. Okay. I'm gonna discard this. Hmm. I'm going to use Veni Vidi Vici. So I'm going to activate Caesar and one legate. So I'm going to cross. And I'm going to have to roll. 
and it's a five, so that's all good. So that's going to be two points. Then I'm going to do two points to remove this. So two, four. And then I'm going to move on that space. So I activated Caesar, and now I can activate a legate. So I'm going to activate Crassus. I'm going to do one. Hmm. Two. Different. And that's pretty much it. Then I'm gonna Did you intend to leave a legion at that? Yeah. Actually, oh no that yeah, that's stupid. I'm gonna do one, two, three, and four. Uh and now I have three action points. And I'm gonna take Oh, actually, I know what I'm going to take. Uh, one. Two. That would give me the naval supremacy here. One, two. And then I have a third one. And I'm going to place it here. I'm going to discard that card. And now it's your turn. I should have played this when you played that. I missed it. Oh yeah, this is a very powerful yeah. card. So that's that's the only um, that's the only card that uh, oops, that's the uh, the only card that uh, enables you to uh, prevent an event from your opponent to uh, to be triggered. And I should have used it, but I um I was looking at other stuff. Um. I don't really know what I can do. I'm just gonna have to place influence, I think. It's getting annihilated. Yeah, you need to play the political game now and maybe try to prevent me from having Belgica control because Celtica control is almost a given. Um and for you to prevent me from having Belgica control, you just need to take for now I control no provinces. Uh so if you control one. That's already a good thing. If you could control two, that would be great. And you could easily do that. If you place one influence marker in Treveri and two influence marker in Eburones, you will control those two provinces. And that will make it almost impossible for me to match you. Yeah. Stank, set, fit. Yeah, having the two VPs is going to be yeah virtually impossible. Uh, yep, yep, yep. What should I do? I don't want to fight the Germans. They are a bit too tough. <laughs> I'm a bit worried that you have the second German action card. <laughs> and I'm going to play this one for one action point, and I'm just going to convert this one no. play that for the event not much use anymore there's not many places i can get from it but so you conduct an influence action in each province of goal that already contains at least one Gallic influence marker. Yeah. And there's only two that I can do that now. Uh, yeah. yeah I'm wondering if for if for if for that specific event, you know what? You shouldn't do that. Play them for for the ups and just place them anywhere you want, rather than doing that. That would be better for point. you. Yeah. Point. So you can place three IM, and for example, you could can take control of uh, Remy pretty uh, pretty easily. Yeah. 
And final card of the game, uh, and I'm going to use eight from Pompeii. Uh, so if I played the event, I could have um, two steps uh, added. But the thing is that I know that I'm going to have them in reinforcement. So I'm going to use uh, the three of them for ops. And I'm thinking about... I'm going to place one in Jargovia because I don't want you to be a place to, to, be, to place the, the Averni tribe here because you would have the bonus from Jargovia. So I'm going to do one here. And then I'm going to do... Yeah, I'm, I cannot... Yeah, I cannot beat you in Belgica, so we'll just do Rome control here and Rome control here. One, two, three, and discard. And that's the eight action round of the turn. Uh, and now we can go back to the sequence of play and check what's the next step. So we just did the strategy phase. Now we're going to go into the winter phase. So now it's return home segment. So we remove all siege points marker from the map. So there are none. Uh, then we return all mercenary units uh, and the minor tribes and the Gallic militia to their holding box, and there are none. The Germans are not a minor tribe, so they stay on the map. Uh, then we return all tribes on the map uh, to their fortified towns, and there are no tribes anymore, so that's not a problem anymore. Um, and then we don't have Versigitorix or Ambiorix, so nothing here. So now we have the Roman winter segment. So I have to place Caesar back to Rome. So I'm going to take Caesar. And he's going to move away here in the Rome box here. And then I can choose, I think, to keep one legate. Yeah, I can return one or both legate to the legate holding box. And I have Crassus and Cicero. And I actually kind of like Crassus because he can move up to four. So I can move one and do a siege, which is pretty cool. So I'll add it to the kept legate box. And the other one I will send back to the draw pool. So that's it for the legate phase. And then uh, I can march my legions before doing the winter attrition. So as I was saying, uh, I can store up to four legions on one space uh, that I control with an IM or I can store two in a space that I don't control and I can move each of them three moves. And the thing that is important is that I'm going to be able to uh, uh, to convert the spaces to uh, to my faction if there is uh, any issue. Uh, no, if, uh, if I do the winter in an empty space, it will become, yeah, it will become under my control. So I'm gonna do one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and like this. So this is the moves that I'll do for winter. So that would give me the control at the end of winter of those three spaces. And for the people who are watching or wondering why I'm placing them like this, the thing that is really cool when you place your uh, units like this during winter in triangular shape is uh, if you get attacked on action round one the following turn uh, on uh, uh, by one of the Gallic tribe, you actually have two opportunities for um, uh, for supporting uh, the, the faction that gets attacked. So the triangular shapes like this is probably the best defensive position you can get. And I don't need to be too greedy, so I wouldn't spread more. So triangular shape like this is, is pretty solid for me. Um, and then will I risk it? I will do... So this is slightly riskier. Is it? Yeah, that's a bit, that's almost cocky. <laughs> uh, yeah, but let's go for it. We'll see. Uh, so that's the winter phase. Um, and then there is Roman attrition, uh, but I'm not overstacking anywhere, so I don't suffer uh, any attrition here. And then we have the isolation segment. So we check if there are any Roman IMs that are isolated, and all my IMs can trace back to, uh, to different supply sources, so I don't have an issue. And then it's the same for you. Uh, your influence markers can trace back to strongholds. Uh, so you have no issues here. Sorry, there is no isolation issues. And then we have uh, the political segment. And here is where I'm going to score my victory points for the turn. So I dominate Celtica. That gives me five points. 
I dominate, I'm present in Aquitania, so that gives me plus one, so that's five plus one, six. And then I'm present in Belgica, so that's gonna be plus two, eight. And you see here, if I score seven or eight points, I will get one VP for the turn. So I'm gonna flip that one and place it here. And that means that first turn I scored one for Caesar Pass, one for, two for Britannia, and one for Governance. So I'm at four VP. And then, so that's the political segment, victory check, there is no victory. And then it's end of winter, we remove devastation. Then I can place Roman influence in those spaces. So this becomes Rome controlled, this becomes Rome controlled. And all this becomes Rome controlled. Uh, yeah, and that's and that's all good. So that's going to be end of turn. There is no reshuffle at the end of turn one, two, and three. That only on, yeah, only at the end of turn three. So that would be the end of turn one. Any questions on your side, Sean, during like for the full turn, or any questions in the chat? Overall for so, uh, for the game. So people say this is hard to play as the Romans. Yeah, yeah, it's super hard as the Romans. Really? That's not that's not the game I'm watching happen here. Everything's coming up Caesar. And I think the so just to I think the big mistake that you that you've made was to move your um, move your units uh, out of your fortified towns. And I think the first couple of turns, what you're going to try to do is stay fortified in your towns, force me to do sieges because sieges take me a lot of time to resolve and I'm going to lose a lot of time making those sieges. And while I do this, then you can have political influence spreading across the board. Uh, so if we go, when we go in turn two, think about staying where you are uh, and, and forcing me to, to make sieges. Sieges are very painful and long for me. And while, I, while I'm doing this, you can just, yeah, just start to raise uh, support for, for a Gallic insurrection. As you can see now, normally I shouldn't have like that level of uh, political control. Yeah, I think we're at almost a foregone conclusion already, but we'll continue. Yeah, and that's also something that that someone is saying that. Um, so some people argue that this game is broken. Will and with proper strategy, it is almost impossible for the Romans to win. But still, this game is sweet. Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, I. To, it's the first my fourth game. Uh, and I do believe that it's harder for the Romans in the sense that it doesn't allow for any mistake. So you need to know the game really well if you're playing to uh, playing against a player that has um, some level of experience uh, in the game playing as the Gaelic player, because no mistake would be forgiven. Like it's it's really tough. It's a very very tight game. I'm. I don't know if against a very strong Gaelic player it's impossible. I, I don't know the game enough, and I think that's. I'm always a bit skeptical of people who who think that unless there is a very specific strategy that is breaking the game, uh, I think it's always hard to say uh, the game is unwinnable. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess you should probably ask uh, ask uh, Mark Simonich if during playtest they realized that it was really impossible for the for the Romans. But I I guess that they probably won as the Romans if they released the game. And I think that yeah. just Caesar was brilliant. So maybe him winning that campaign in just a matter of six years was pretty exceptional. I don't know. That's all right. Cool. Uh, so that's so let's go into turn two. So I'm going to move the turn marker here. So now we're in 56 BC. Uh, Roman is uh, yeah. Uh, Caesar is spending his winter in Rome, so he didn't like winter in uh, uh, in France. Apparently, he wanted to uh, have a bit more sun and uh, I don't know, maybe good vegetables or stuff like this. So Gallic reinforcement phase. So you're going to start by drawing three uh, uh, three tribes. Treveri, Biturige, and Olercy. Seven, seven up here. So yeah, seven is where you actually are in control. So here, 14 is here, and 16 is here, in the middle. Uh, just one thing that for you to know is if you wanted, you could place your fortified town where you already have an IM, and then you will just displace the, this IM somewhere else in the region. 
if you wanted. It's not necessary, but it's it's an option that you can have. Let's try that here. Um, Uh, yeah. And then oh, oh that's, that's nice. Even I don't know. I think that's probably stupid, but no, 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 I think it's actually pretty cool. I I didn't think about it because that's the thing is that you can try to relieve a siege here. Uh, so, for example, if I if I was doing a a siege uh, in one of those two towns, you could try to relieve it by moving in. And then if you were defeated, you would just retreat in your fortified city. So I think it's actually probably, I've never seen that because it, it's rarely the case that you draw two tribes that are next to each other. But I think it can be actually pretty cool. So yeah, I like the idea a lot. Yes, uh, so that Wait, was the- This is a Simonich game, isn't it a Zork bomb now? Like we're, we're creating. <laughs> no, there is no Zork bonds in this one. Yeah, so you can't, you can't come through Celtica. Anymore. No, no, no. I'm I'm locked. Yeah, that's completely locked now. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, now I have my uh, Roman replacement and reinforcements. Uh, so reinforcements is two steps, and they need to be able to trace uh, supply back to Rome, which is the case for those two. So I'm going to reinforce each of those, and then the next step is the Rome uh, like place Caesar. So I roll a d6, and if I roll a one, it stays in Rome for one turn. Oh yeah, that's not what I wanted. And I roll a three, so now I can place him anywhere. And because he's Caesar, is not like anyone. Uh, he's gonna go up north, ready to take action. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, definitely, he's going there. So straight into Belgica. And then I'm going to draw one of my legates. So I had that legate here that I kept. So I'm going to place him. Uh, I don't know yet. I'm going to see what is my second legate. And I got a lame legate. Oh, no, it's actually my son. So, or son-in-law, I think. Brutus. Uh, yeah, then I'm going to place... Crassus here, and I'm going to place Brutus with Dad and Caesar on top, because he's the boss. Good. Uh, so that's the... Um, uh, yeah, and now we can draw eight cards, and after we've drawn uh, our eight cards, you're going to be able to have your, uh, your uh, master. And I'm going to draw my cards publicly so people see what kind of stuff I have. Not great, not great. Shit. Really bad. Really, really bad. Okay. No, actually, it's more than okay. It's the strongest card of the game, so that's good. But overall, the hand is pretty bad, but I have, yeah, one of the best cards of the game here, so that's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, and now that we've done this, uh, you can move each of your tribe's three uh, movement points. But as you've seen, Maybe not a good idea. And I'm gonna serve myself some thing to drink. And for people who wonder in the chat, so I have a bit of a mix uh, tonight. I have a like a, a, a dry sake that is a bit like a dry white wine now that I drink fresh, very nice. And then on the side, I'm doing some promotion for for alcohol now so to make really sure that I'm that I'm absolutely not monetizable on YouTube. And on the side, then I'm drinking Lagavulin, 16 years, very nice, very smoky. Strongly recommend. I have filtered water. You have filtered water. I've heard really good <laughs> things about it. <laughs> it's better than unfiltered. Um, I guess the only tribe that I could potentially move would be this Germani tribe but they're probably oh yeah but that uh, yeah but they they, you, a... they are not, they are not covered by the they are not a gallic tribe so you cannot oh, yeah. okay yeah. but even if i could i'd probably leave them sitting there just as a bit of a deterrent mm. so and you cannot yeah, trigger a fight try. with that move yeah i'm not going to move anyone we'll try it we'll try it your way okay 
but then uh, my option now is uh, do I want to play the winter campaign card and I will not play any winter campaign cards so you can take the first turn uh, the first round of this turn yeah round turn always a bit confusing but this one is round is playing a card and turn is the full sequence contrary to what some people say Through my so actually, I have a yeah. I'm wondering uh, if there are anyone. So if people in the in the chat watching now, uh, is there anyone who um, who actually played Falling Sky and this game? Because I'm I've been thinking a lot about Falling Sky since I started played uh, playing uh, Caesar uh, Rome versus Gold. Actually, it gave me a bit of an idea of something that I wanted to do, uh, uh, a video that I wanted to do, a comparative analysis of the two games. But I'm wondering if there are people in the chat who played both of them. Actually, you did, Sean. You played two, both of them now. Uh, no, I've only, I've only done the tutorial bit of Falling Sky. And I, don't, I don't even know if I, how far I got with that. I do need to play Falling Sky. Yeah, we should. Yeah. So you're playing for three ups. Yeah. It's a bit calm. I think I only hear sadness from your side, Sean. Sadness, it's, pure sadness. It's cool. Oh, so you were taking influence on the ports. You were actually flipping it back to your side. So you have Gallic Naval Supremacy now. You know what this means? War. Yeah. I just cannot leave you Naval Supremacy in. I mean, it's the Atlantic. So, yeah. That sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll uh, do another um game in the Atlantic Chase series. I would like to try this. I need to check. Uh, OK, so I need to check my cards a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks a bit. I'm going to play a one-ups card. So it's going to be a, a quiet turn, uh, first action round. So I'm just going to activate Caesar. Oh, is it a good idea to activate Caesar, actually? Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq. Hmm. Ah, that's an interesting question. Yeah, I'm going to activate Caesar. So I'm going to do one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, oh, I'm going to be sneaky, and five. Hmm. So I see that some people are joining the the live. So for information, you might know we're playing Caesar Rome versus Goal, GMT's game that was released. I think it was it released in 2020 or 2021, John. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. 2020. 2020, 2020. So late. Like, yeah. So using the the same system as Hannibal and uh, some in some way uh, Washington's war about the uh, yeah Caesar's campaign against the the Gallic uprising. And we are at turn two right now, and we just played our first card. And now Sean, who's playing the golds, is about to play his second card. Just... Hmm. 
All right, I'm going to play this one for the event. So we'll upgrade him to a. Oh yeah, an unbesieged town to uh yeah. And then two action points. So this one is now upgraded. So I will have minus one uh, dice roll modifier when I do a siege here. Yep. Oof. So what are you doing? I've got two action points. So yeah. I'm going to do goal control back up in. Oh, up, yeah. Up there. And let's do goal control there. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Un, deux, trois. Ah, that's super annoying. <laughs> Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq. I wanted to do something smart, but you were you were adding a constraint. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play eight from Crassus. So eight from Crassus is one of the stronger cards of the game. So that if I play them, uh, play this card for its event during turn one to four, um, it's gonna give me five AP. Uh, and the thing that I'm gonna do is the first thing that I'm gonna do is use one action point to place uh, influence here. One. Then I'm gonna do. I'm gonna activate Caesar. So that's gonna be uh, one movement, two movement. Then I'm gonna remove for two this. Uh, so one, two, three, four. And with my fifth movement, I'm gonna go here. And now you mm, you can intercept if you want, or you can wait for me to start a siege and attack later. So it's really up to you. Oh wait. So that was one, two action points. And then with my remaining three action points, I'm going to say Rome control here, Rome control here. So one, and I have one more. And with the remaining one, I'm going to take an option on the Suessiones. Here. And I will discard that card. So I don't have enough movement points left to start a siege. So that's going to be my all five action points. So that was a very costly uh, move. And the reason I did this is that I wanted to start a siege while dominating uh, that, uh, that province. So if you attack me and try to relieve the siege, I will have the bonus of plus two when I'm going to be fighting against you. And just for you to know, Sean, there are there are some people supporting you in the chat, <laughs> uh, and they will be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> they will be okay, disappointed. Yeah. Okay. So you you haven't you're not seeding me yet, are you? Uh, yes, I. I uh, you're actually yes. In that case, you're. I I haven't. I don't have a siege point, but I started the siege um, because you. So I can still, yeah. I can still remove this one anyway. Yeah. Now I don't have control anymore, and you could attack me. If you wanted, but you don't have to. But now at least I don't have the... At least I don't have the benefit of being uh, at 14, which would have given me a, a calm shift. Oh, 
Ouais, 12, 14. Ah, oh, ça date, yeah, ok. I don't know if it's not, uh, I really don't have any, any major clue. I'll just keep it a go. Ok. Uh, I'm going to discard that card to draw a new one. That was maybe a bit dumb because I could have used it actually. Yeah, that was that was officially stupid. Uh, yeah. Then I'm going to use this card for two APs. I'm going to use one AP to activate Crassus. So he's going to do one, and I'm going to pick that guy up. Two, three, two, and three. So one, two, three, and now I have one point. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to leave him here, and then I'm going to use my other action point to activate Caesar. So you're defending at uh, 5 plus 3, 8. And I'm attacking at 12. So I'm at uh, 1 and a half to 1. And when I'm rolling with Caesar for a siege, I have plus 1 to my die roll. So 1 and a half to 1 is that table here. And I'm going to roll 2d6. Oof, that's 12 plus 1, 13. <laughs> okay, that was extremely lucky. Uh, it's, it's the story of the day. Yeah, that was, yeah, I'm sorry about that. So they become reduced and submitted. And this bad. one, yeah, it's, yeah, I feel, I feel bad. bad now. The siege is kind of pointless because I don't get any counterattack. Like, actually, you, you could think if because you're in when a broad you, town that you when you attack, they would at least get to put some steps on the. Oh, but they the do, siege. they do. Um, so you see on the siege, uh, on the left side is the hits that you're going to give me if I attack. So if I roll a two, for example, I would take one hit and you will, and I would take zero siege point. On a five, it's one for each. Uh, so you, you do actually hurt me. It's just that, yeah, if I roll a double six, uh, that was, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's pretty lucky. And you can attack me to try to read, but you got, I must say, Sean, you got really, really unlucky. No, I'm, nah, sorry I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to wait for them to get annihilated. Because all it's going to do is take them out. And ah, you can I'm just step get away anyway. So, uh, but I think if you came to. Yeah, if you came to attack me, I would definitely wait for you because I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm at 12 against 5. I would crush you. Yeah. yeah. So it's. Uh, Caesar is just too OP. I can't deal with him in six legions plus a legate. Yeah, the legate doesn't do anything uh, here. Yeah. It will just enable me to split my troops, but yeah, not much more. Yeah. I just you can do it, Sean. And I think <sighs> that uh, I think that Joe is going to bed, so even Joe is not supporting you anymore. Just remember that in times of despair, Joe let you down. Just want you to remember. So next time we have the three-player game and he's trying to convince you to do something, remember, he let you down tonight. But I'll remember how you crushed me. Uh... Feels like a bit of a wasted time here. We'll do this. I just, I'm feeling like anywhere that Caesar is, is a lost cause. I can't counteract his yeah. speed. I can't counteract his strength. I've just got to make for all of that to crumble. So I may as well work elsewhere. So I'm going to use this event. And we're going to remove that influence. And then I get an action point. Ah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, removing it in the port. Yeah. So now you control three ports and I only control one. 
So actually, you're back to Gaelic naval supremacy. And... I said there. Okay. Ah. Good, good, good. I thought that you would actually go out of your city to try and fight Crassus. Uh, I'm finding that it doesn't matter if I'm in a city or if I'm out of a city. I'm going to have the dice fail me and I'm going to lose. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a bit beaten down in all this combat. It hasn't gone well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play ubiquite for for the event. That's gonna enable me to activate a leader in each of the six regions and have one in Belgica and one in uh, in uh, in here. So I'm gonna do two to remove this. Then I'm gonna do three and move here, and I'm gonna stay here. And then I'm going to activate Caesar, and he's going to move here for one movement point, and then uh, I'm going to start a siege. Uh, so you're defending at 7, and I'm attacking at 12. So that's 1.5. Yeah, 1.5 to 1. So I'm going to bring this. Roll 2d6 plus 1, and that's, yeah, and you're submitted. I got very lucky with the with the dice roll though. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Sean. And that's it for me. So I think the the thing to look into now is if you can prevent me to have um, a Celtica domination. So you're controlling Veneti here. So that's one for you. And I'm only controlling two. So Sequani and I here. Uh, meaning that it's if you can manage to challenge me and have as many provinces dominating uh, than I do, then I would not get five points, but only two. So I think that's definitely the thing that you would, should try to focus on. Knowing that you're very open for where you wanna, where you can place your, uh, where you can place your influence markers. Hmm. Biggest problem though is wherever I put it, Caesar's just gonna rock in and undo it. For me, I'm doing um, influence marker placement is really hard. I need to move there and remove it with with movement points. So depending on where you place them, you can. It's gonna. It might be really hard for me to to remove anything. I think for Belgica, you're already in. Uh, uh, so yeah. you have one, two. Actually, you only have. Yeah, you have three, and I have. I only have one. So for Belgica, you're good. But you could try to sell, challenge me in Celtica. Do I send the Germanis after? So for the Germany, you it's only through an event that you can do it. Oh, so I can't move them. No, no, no. It's they are they are an independent tribe, but there are some events that activate them. Uh, okay, so they're useless. Um, I wouldn't say useless, but yeah, they're useless. <laughs> they're completely dead to me. You just walk around them. Um. Mm. 
What are you gonna do up in the north? I'll try this because I don't know. Okay. Um, send him and he will be. How do I make his value work? So his value is going to be based on um, the number of uh, regions that you control. So if you place it uh, on his Belgica side, you control one, two, three regions. So its uh, offensive value is going to be three. Yeah. So if he goes in there. So that puts you at eight. Try that. I don't know. I just don't think I can. It'd be a rock for the Romans to break against. They just sweep in, roll double sixes or five and six in every place they come to and move along. Hmm. I think I'm gonna play unrest spreads that enables me to remove a CU uh, in a space that contains one open spot. So I'm gonna remove this. And then I have one action point and I'm gonna activate Crassus. And he's gonna delete this. One, he was do two. And two, three, and yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be it for me. Oof. Yeah, but it's only it's only worth the top points now. It's not worth the other because there's only one fortified town left. So I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna activate for two <laughs> and I'm gonna flip this one. And then I'm gonna place one here. Do I need to have one, two provinces under control and you only have one. So actually, Yeah, I might actually more do this. <sighs> Don't use the event because it's going to place them. Right. 
Oh, yeah, so do you, yeah, you took control of, yeah. Rémi, and then you're, yeah, you're trying to attend to, yeah, to take control of Amor ici. I won't be able to do what I wanted to do. That's, uh, so that's one, two, I have two. Okay, so I need to have another Gallic um, uh, Celtica province under control. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to play this for one up and I'm going to place it here. And discard this. So you play one up, and that's going to be your last card of the turn. Yeah. yeah. And you took the armor ici. Yeah. yeah. So that's so you dominate two provinces now. I dominate three. Uh, then in Belgica, I dominate two, and you dominate three. So the best thing I can do is potentially prevent you from. Yeah, I cannot take back control. Do uh, strongholds so... count for influence? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. so you're you're actually good. You have the Eberones and the Treveri, so that's two plus Remy, that's three. And I only have Belovasi and uh, uh, the Suesiones. So what I'm going to do now is my last card is going to be just to secure the Suesiones. So that was the German migration. I was hoping for you to get out to see if I could activate the Germans against you, but you didn't fall into the trap. So I'm going to do one two and with the remaining two i'm going to remove this three four and discard this card and that's the end of the action phase of round two and now uh we're going into the winter phase so that should be pretty fast so return home segment so we remove all siege points from the map all mercenaries but there are nuns uh, actually yes you do have the militia so the militia will go back um to its holding box yeah uh, and then we'll go straight to the uh roman winter phase so first i will place caesar back in rome and then uh i can keep one legate and discard the other I like Rasus quite a bit, so we'll keep him in the kept legate box. And then I will discard Brutus. And then I can march legions to winter camp, and that's uh, where I can move my legions up to three. And I think I'm going to do one, two, one, two one uh, and then I'm going to do one two like this so that's going to be the shape that I'm going to take and I can store in each of those neutral spaces too uh, or yeah I think that would be that's probably for the best so that's it. Then we remove isolated Roman uh, influence markers, and there are none of them that are isolated. None of them, none of yours are also isolated, so none of the markers are being removed. Uh, and then I'm going to score for governance. So I control Celtica, that gives me five points. I'm present in Belgica, that gives me two points, so that's seven. And then I have one point for Aquitania, so that's eight. So this turn, once again, I will get one VP of governance. And, 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 uh, then when once we've done this, no victory uh, is done, we remove devastation, and then I can place IMs in spaces where I have units. So this will become ROM control, ROM control, ROM control. Oh, I forgot about those guys, yeah. This becomes... ROM control and ROM controlled. And that would be the end of turn two. 
and we've been two hours in, so I think it's. Uh, I think we can do. A, we can potentially do a break and a, and a, and a quick chat. I think at this stage. So we've played two turns just to have the situation on the board for for people who are yeah who joined a bit late. Um, so I'm supposed to have uh, scored twelve points in the in the in the span of uh, six turns. Uh, I have one VP because I conquered Caesar's Pass. I have two VP for uh, the campaign in Britannia. And then I scored two governance points. So that's gone three, five, uh, five in uh, in two turns. And I need to go up to 12. And I think politically, I'm in a pretty good, uh, yeah, in a pretty good position to, uh, to, uh, to do something big, I think. What do you think, Sean? You seem disapp <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> oh no, no, it's okay. It's just yeah, this is just a um, a wave that I, I I don't. Maybe by the time I get to turn five, things might start to shift, or even turn four, where I start to get a leader. But I'm just finding it's obviously I played the first turn very poorly i don't think i played the second turn much better but i still have one tribe in town on the map um, yeah i think it, the, the the first turn was yeah was was a what didn't went well uh, clear clearly uh, but i think the second one okay because you have one guy on the board and you're gonna have three more so that means that you're not gonna be at three but at four so potentially as of turn four you'll have already still have two because for me getting more than two is gonna be a bit tricky so I think turn two went okay, I would say. Yeah, I, I mean, it'd be nice if they are a little bit more spread around the map too, so you had to actually move to get there. But when you're getting them in provinces right beside each other and they're right near where the legions are as well, very quickly you've got to more towns and then you've got the movement points to siege them. So it's it's a bit of a, a an issue for me there that everything's so close in that turn. But... And then it'd be nice if you rolled a couple of ones. That'd be good. But then you yeah. just re-roll it and get a six anyway. So. <laughs> um, but you could say yeah, that the no. thing that I, yeah, the, the, the positive side of me being so lucky with the dice roll and submitting so many of your tribes is that I don't I don't get VPs for them. And that is one of my main way of getting VPs is actually deleting tribes. So in, yeah. in my luck, I got unlucky. I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. But... Um, but uh, yeah, but I think yeah, it's. No, uh... I think it it'd be good to sort of be more familiar with the game, and then so okay, now I know sort of what's going to happen, and and roll again. Like so, I think yeah, future plays will be much better. Obviously, dice dice with standing, um, but yeah, I think next time we we start from scratch it will be a different story um yeah because I'll, I'll have more of what the what the goals are trying to do um i was playing it as a, being you know being somewhat more barbaric that they would be more aggressive as a faction and but no they're, they're more i am disappointed in the siege mechanics i think there doesn't feel like there's enough value in being in a siege um, unless you load it with tribes, but I don't know really how you can load it with tribes, which just means you leave a town empty. So I find that mechanic felt almost useless. It oh, slowed okay. you down, yeah. but it didn't actually really stop you at all. It just um, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would have thought that being in a, in a town, especially then when you got that minus one DRM, might have helped it seemed to um so yeah i find that mechanic a little bit eh, didn't feel like it added much to it slowed mm. slowed caesar down a little bit but not that much in the end to be fair i rolled a double six uh yeah when I, <laughs> yes and i think the thing with the double six is if i have caesar i have plus one so the double six convert to a 13 and then you have your your uh, one drm uh uh, minus one DRM, but I still put it at a 12, so you cannot do anything again. Caesar rolling a double six uh, at 1.5 to one. It it never happened to me that I actually get a city in one turn. Like it sounds like that's that's extremely lucky. 
And just to give a bit of context, uh, the first time I played at the Romans, I lost on turn one. So at the end of turn one, I didn't even have influence in Belgica. I just only had presence in um, uh, in Celtica, so that I basically only had two points for Celtica, one point for Aquitania, and I was at three, and I instant loss on turn one. So that was the <laughs> that was that was pretty crushing. brutal. Yeah, pretty crushing. And it's like this doesn't happen with the um, with the with with the with the goals. And I, and but I agree with you that uh, yeah, the goals can be really tough, and if you get unlucky with the siege, it can be it can be really hard. But I think this, the siege mechanic, you didn't see it shine that much. Um, uh, yeah, definitely not yeah. in, in that game. But it can be a, it can really hold you back, especially if you play Alesia or if you have one of those, those uh, this Venice tribe here on the on the Atlantic coast that have the bonus of um, of plus two strength uh, if you have the if you have the naval supremacy that can be a really big pain in the ass. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm hundred percent sure that if we played it again, uh, knowing what you were, and that's the thing about this game is that you you learn pretty fast. Like the, the there is a learning curve, but you you learn actually fast. And as soon as you play your second game, you make radical different decisions based uh, based on this, which for me is a is a cool game. Like you get crushed the first time, and you're like, oh my god, I have so many things to learn. But then it's not complex enough that you cannot wrap your head around it and and realize what you can do. Um, but yeah, yeah, but I got extremely lucky. Yeah, I, I think Joe's question too: Does this lead you to being able to pick up things like Washington's War or Hannibal a bit faster, which will be good because as yeah. you know, me and that Washington's War rule book, we're not friends. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. But yeah, and that's we'll the thing. The that yeah, it's it's you know it's those very optimal rule books that they are really well written and they are really efficient. But uh, but when you are like us, like uh, like for me, I need to I almost need to play a game a first time before understanding a rule book. And Washington's War is really that kind of it's perfectly written, but it's too perfect for me. Like I need someone to hold my hand and say, "Look, this is what's happening right now." It's like, "Oh, yeah. thank you, Mark." <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So yeah, no, no, I, I like. I, I, I think this is great. It made me actually go looking for um, the Gaelic Wars book yesterday, but yeah, it was not to be found in my town. So, oh. um, so yeah, so it's um, no, it's good. I, I like it. I, I, I can see this game ending. I don't know. Like you're not really racking up the BPs at a rapid rate enough either. So, um, yeah, I'm not even game. halfway through. Like I yeah. had two excellent rounds and I'm my five out of twelve points. So it's not like I'm, like I still have a long way to go. Yeah. So yeah, no, th I think there's, yeah, it's it's not a foregone conclusion by any means. Um, especially yeah, as as my leaders will come out, I think, and give me more options as well for what I can do on the board. I think, yeah, it might start to swing a bit, and you can start to see where it is really hard for the Romans. You almost have to to crush them in those early turns um, because they'll potentially be hard to grind out a win with. Mm. Yeah, and that's one of the things that once you have leaders coming in, you have a different dynamic coming up. Uh, and I know for me, the first time I played the, as the goals, when I have Ambiorix that just came in and I, would, I got super lucky, uh, but I have Ambiorix that came with the Nervi, which was the, the, the strongest um, uh, Gallic tribe. And the dynamic changed completely. Like I started to like really hurt some legions, and we had some really big battles, and 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 the Roman had to uh, actually had to give up at the end of turn five because he was, I think he was at six or seven points at this stage, but I I wore him down so much that he couldn't come back uh, and restore his units fast enough that yeah, so it's it's actually a pretty tough challenge for for the Roman. A lot of people are actually saying yeah that that. That it's almost impossible to win with the Romans. I'm not sure I agree with that, but I do agree that it's super, super hard. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, but yeah, thanks for for playing. I hope I did a not too bad a job to at explaining the rules. That was the no. thing I was the most worried about, uh, because there is a lot of small things uh, that is yeah that is sometimes hard yeah. to remember. Well, uh, I but think yeah, it probably was... um, it, it's a good game in that at the start there's not a lot you can do anyway. 
so you can yeah. sort of get those steps into the game and pick up those those little rules as you go and then once once you reach battle then you start to have the intercept and avoid mechanics come in and all of that so so yeah no i think it, it sort of built it built its way in so that it was it was quite easy to it was just having the the concept of what the, each faction was trying to do i think that took a little bit longer than mm. um, probably worked for me but that's fine um if i if i think if i read that second or third last page in the rule book it says how to win so i should have just read that and then just waited yeah, to and, me. and actually there is something about the so it says has to, how to win but also the and, and i think that's that's mark that added this in there uh, mark simonich who added actually a, a few notes about some some hints on on how to play that are interesting um and actually gives you a bit of a of a vision of what each faction should be doing and and to be on the path to victory um but i think that for the roman it doesn't say enough he should probably have had a whole page just for the romans uh <laughs> to 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 tell them they optimize and a few hints i would give to to people for the romans that i picked up for for the for the games that i've done is optimize your action round eight so your last card needs to be a card that's going to be like prepare for a good, because it's going to be the last card of the turn. Your opponent is not going to be able to react. Prepare for that. Like you really need to make sure that if you're going to activate a leader, it's going to be make sure to spread in right relevant places to actually take control or something like this, or place influence markers when you can cut off someone, uh, cut off some a pocket of, of 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 Roman ones. And I think you need to be super aggressive with the winter phase. Like uh, like those guys here that I placed all around in Biturige, uh this is basically almost yeah four action points that i'm saving up by being a bit um by taking a bit of a risk uh, by spreading them around and then placing the influence um, uh, for free uh, you just have to make sure that you're not putting yourself in a weak spot so the way you disposition them is really important to make sure that you can evade and intercept if you're getting attacked early on by some 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 gold but you need to be super aggressive and then that whole drop off some units mechanic is actually quite useful because then you can convert um, Gallic influence markers. And basically, normally, what you would have to do is spend two movement points to remove one, then spend one action point to place one. If you just let some units there, it's one action point just to flip one completely. So it's also something that you need to consider. But uh, but it's super hard, super hard with the with the Romans once you get a. Once you have a, as soon as the Gaelic player has one or two, has a couple of games of experience, it, it becomes a real, really tough challenge. But yeah. Cool. What would you like to, to play next if we have in a couple of weeks another session? Or just to, to see. And we, I think we'll go through a vote like we did this time. But just uh, what do you have in mind? And, and we can bring back some, some of the stuff from the list that we have for, for that game. And if some people in the chat have some suggestions, yeah, feel free, feel free to type in. But I think you had Virsin das Volk that you wanted to try. Yeah, well, I mean that sits on my shelf, so it would be. I mean, it's probably heading towards twelve months that it's been sitting there that hasn't been played. So um, that's one I'd like to sort of play because I think it's one I can play with my wife quite easily too. Once I've got my head around it. Um, she should be able to take all her Twilight Struggle supremacy and annihilate me in that as well. So um, teach me a lesson that um, I won't soon forget. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm open to anything. So if people have suggestions of stuff that obviously it helps if one of us have played it so that we can um, help the other one along. But hey, yeah, no. maybe we can both learn a game as we go and bumble our way through. So or the ideal. Well. We get Joe in, and he does a 30-minute teach for us, and then we just play it after he's taught us the rules, and then he goes to bed because he's an old man. Yeah, that could work. That could work. Or if we start earlier, I could teach both of you to play a classic war game and then uh, and then comment live, uh, uh, like a Hex and Counter game. I could do that. Teach both oh, of you a Hex could, and Counter game and see how it goes. We could we could use something like one of those... Um, C3, I'm once the, the Waterloo or Gettysburg or Battle for Curse, Battle for Moscow, something that's small counters. Actually, Battle for Moscow would be a, a good one because it's uh, 
it's a it's a classic hex and counter game pretty easy to pick up um it has a nice uh online version that could be uh that could be nice to to stream and uh i think it's a really cla it's a it's a real classic and it has a bit of a twist because you have fighting first before movement which is something that you don't see uh very often in hex and counter games but that could be a cool thing for it's it's more yeah it's and it's really poorly <laughs> rated I think it's really not deserved it's a really interesting game um, yeah I think that yeah Battle for Moscow could be a nice one but we'll see we'll plan for a vote I think I'm gonna plan for an interview um, next week I haven't decided who to interview yet uh, but I heard your suggestion and I might reach out to them <laughs> and we'll see uh, if they're up for it but yeah I don't know but yeah feel free to to push any uh, suggestion uh, to think about you, Sean, but also in the chat. Cool. Thanks. But I think that will be it for for tonight. So thanks everyone for uh, for for joining. Uh, I hope that it was a good way to discover the game. Uh, I know that personally, I like to see watch people play. Uh, that helps me understand the rules afterwards. I hope we didn't make too many rules mistakes. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but it was great. Thanks, Sean, for the for for that session, that was uh, Caesar Rome versus Gold by GMT Games, uh, 2020 release, and I think that would be uh, that would be it to, uh, for tonight. Anything else you wanted to say before we we cut off? Uh, well, thank you for everyone who watched. Um, I'm sure it was pretty dull because um, my brain is slow and trying to pick things up. But um, yeah, uh, maybe next time we'll try and give each other a bit more of a hard time and, and we uh, could play a game that we both know also that could be like if we, oh, if we played the uh, flashpoint south china sea by uh uh by harold you would crush me like in a, in a matter of, uh, <laughs> two, of 15 minutes so that could be a good uh, a good payback time uh or yeah i'm pretty sure there are some games where you could uh yeah you could you could have a, a small uh, small session where you could humiliate me uh, that could be fun Great. yeah, no, I think but, I, yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, it was fun. It's a good way to start a Sunday morning. Yeah, it's it was an Easter old. game. Yeah, that's it. Now I'll go see some sugar hyped kids. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I saw one of your. Uh, I saw your son coming in earlier, so uh, so he might yeah. be waiting for you. Uh, but yeah, I yeah. will. I will send out the um, the the generic now. Goodbye, everyone, and talk to you in a second, Sean, when we're out of this. See you. No worries. See bye.